Hello and welcome back. And that is right. Finally, 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 QNAP are starting to roll out some SMB home user, home lab type equipment for their 2025 and 2026 series. Something we've been waiting for all oh, better part of three, three and a half years at this point. Now, hopefully right now, there's some nice graphics over here of the three new solutions that were unveiled overnight by QNAP. These are the QU405, the QU605 and QU805, a four, a six and an eight bay NAS. And I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of that name. But the QU represents that they are going to support not only QTS, the EXT4 software, but also QUTS, their ZFS software. So again, alongside all of the apps and bells and whistles that QNAP roll into that software, there's also support of RAID configurations from ZFS, your RAID Z, your triple parity RAID, your fast RAID build, your fast RAID silvering. But on top of that, inline data duplication, inline data compaction, inline data compression, all of those things happening in real time. Again, for systems targeted largely toward SMB, home, home labbers and stuff, that's going to be very appealing here. Now, before we get on to the hardware configuration, it's worth highlighting. The reason I talk about finally, finally, finally is that these are follow-ups to things like this. This is the TS6464. Uh, and the 64 series came out in about uh, towards the end of 2022, and it has been a wee while. Now, there's been a few other different variations, but QNAP, when they do launch these products, they tend to find one solid hardware configuration and then expand it into their growing uh, SMB range. So you end up with a slim model, a silent model, an SSD focus model and more. So the configuration we're seeing here is going to be expanded into several different releases over the next few months. However, I would say this doesn't feel quite like a complete replacement for this system. Maybe it isn't, maybe this is something QNAP are investigating and there is a true follow-up to this, but at least from the configuration I'm going to talk about in a moment, it doesn't feel like a complete fit. Now, the big headline here is that CPU. They're going for the new Twin Lake series. NAS devices have started rolling out in the market with this particular CPU since the start of this year. Um, and it is the N150 or the N355. By or, what do I mean? Each of this four, six, and eight bay device are gonna rock out with two configurations, the standard and the LITE light version. The light version arrives with the quad-core M150 Intel Twin Lake processor there. And again, it's got integrated graphics. It's got nine lanes that it's going to have to spread out across the hardware. And we'll touch on that later, believe me. Alternatively, the standard versions are rocking out with an eight-core i3, that N355 Intel Twin Lake processor there. I hate seagulls. Nevertheless, the idea that people are going to be purchasing a standard class kind of mid tier NAS with an eight core Intel i3 processor is going to be appealing to some of you. Alongside that, it was also going to rock out with either eight or 16 gig of DDR5 memory. So no ECC support here, which at that CPU configuration and presumably the price point, something we'll touch on later on, makes sense, but it's only one slot inside there. It's not fixed RAM, but it's only a single SODEM slot there. So again, given the support of single channel on that CPU, I'm wondering if it is actually even going to officially go above 16 gig. It might go up to 32, but again, single DDR5 modules at 32 gig on a single channel. I'm not sure there's going to be a, an official work for that, but we'll have to come back to that when we have one here in the studio. Now, in terms of design, we're seeing tweaks here to the TSX53E series of devices there. So it isn't utilizing this familiar one here that we talked about uh, from the 64 series. It's somewhere between, I would say, the TS453 sort of design and that of a Synology. What do I mean? Well, there's no LCD panel there. It's plastic on the outside. There's a ton of ventilation on practically every side with the QNAP logo obviously ventilated there on the side. The front has got ventilation around each of the individual hard drive bays, supporting up to 30 TB per SATA bay, by the way. Uh, and on the rear, the four bay has got a single fan and the six and the eight bay have got dual fans on there. Now, um, alongside that, the system has an external PSU for all of them. They're all using an external DC connected power brick. Not a huge surprise there, but the, all of them arrive with M.2 NVMe slots inside. They all require slight dismantling of the chassis to get to those M.2s. But keep in mind, because it is that Intel Twin Lake, again, with only nine lanes to play with, 
these are only Gen 3 times 1 speed M.2s inside. So you're looking at a maximum 8 to 900 megabytes per second throughput for each of those M.2s because of the overhead of the CPU. Still, it's nice to have that level of storage of those extra M.2s. And keep in mind, depending on whether you use QNAP's QTS or QUTS software, not only can you use these for storage pools and caching, but you can also use it for tiered storage in Q-tier, and you can also use these for M.2 AI adapters and more. But one thing that has not changed is the network ports here compared with its predecessors. It's only got 2.5 GPE on the rear. Now, don't get me wrong, it's all right. And there's a lot of devices right now at this kind of scale that have got 2.5 gig there, and there are two of them on the back, but we are starting to see some five gigabit Ethernet NAS devices arriving at the same price point as 2.5. So I'm, unless QNAP are holding this back for a true successor to this to arrive with 5G, who knows? But it is the fact that it doesn't have a PCIe upgrade slot. Now that is gonna divide the room, I think. I think there are gonna be users that are gonna hear this and think, I can't scale up. And that is something that this, particularly the eight bay, is gonna be a bit disappointing for because the six bay, you're already on the cusp in terms of internal versus external bandwidth. But on the eight bay, even with those nine lanes to play with, I think there is an argument there that the ability to add a PCIe slot would have been desirable. Now, again, I know there are going to be some of you in the comments that are going to say, at the, that scale, at that twin lake processor with only nine lanes of PCIe to play with, 10 GPE was off the table here anyway. But there are currently boards, uh, NAS boards we've seen, and NAS solutions arriving in the market with support of the N150 or N355 CPU that have got 10 GBE that have got a times four PCIe slot there and still support in four to six and even in one case eight SATA connections there. They've just pulled back on different features. You do need to assign at least times two speed to a PCIe slot to afford the upgrade. But what I'm saying is there are ways and means to achieve that and clearly QNAP have gone for a very similar profile here which I know is going to annoy some users that can't scale up. To put that last point into perspective, this is an N150 motherboard. It's an ITX NAS motherboard. It arrives with the same N150 CPU, but it also has a 10 GBE upgrade slot. It has two M.2 NVMe slots inside. It supports up to six SATA connections there and has a single DDR5 memory slot. So it is feasible to add 10 GBE with that CPU profile. Likewise, this is an N3550, an N3550 NAS motherboard in ITX. So it's got that i3 eight core processor there. It has support of six hard drives there via SATA. It has only 2.5 GBE, but it arrives with a times two but physical times for M.2 um, uh, PCIe upgrade slot there. This is what I mean with the two M.2s as well. It is feasible to add either 10 GBE or a PCIe slot at that CPU profile. And that's why its absence here is either QNAP not really pushing the boundaries of that hardware or holding back on a true successor to this. Now, don't take what I've just said there to mean that I'm a downer on this particular series of devices. They're not that bad. The front of it's got a USB Type-C 10 gig one uh, a touch copy button there and port for you to use. And the rear has got two more 10 gig USBs alongside an HDMI 4K 60 frames per second port. HDMI 2.1, by the way, on the i3 version there. For me, the killer here is gonna be the price because QNAP has a tendency to stumble their early pricing of some of their new releases. And given that this hardware profile has existed already in a, several different configurations prior to this point, it's gonna be very interesting to see what price that QNAP roll the two, I'm oh, sorry, the four, the six, and the eight bay device here out at. Because it's gonna be hard for them, obviously, to compete with, frankly, very small profit margin Chinese manufacturers like these when they are a Taiwanese company that are not only rocking out very, very well-established hardware and an existing brand with worldwide global coverage to keep in mind, but also on top of that, 
software as well, combined with those being hardware only that I just talked about. So keep that in mind. But the price is going to have to be good on these. And once again, I don't truly believe, and I hope I'm wrong, that these serve as a true successor to the 6.4 series. But if you're listening to QNAP, let me know. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. There's an article link below that goes into way more detail about these specs and a little bit of a comparison against 6.4 series and the 5.3e series. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I've just got back from Berlin from IFA, so I've got a load of work to do. So I'll see you on the next video.